um good evening all of you am i audible am i visible can i get a confirmation in the chat please good evening janet so uh if you are joining the session for the first time this is dr shanmuga priya i'm professor and head of the department of biochemistry at gonman thootukudi medical college and i'm your an academy educator for biochemistry good evening swati <coughs> good evening ragul nityanand so uh, this is a session on interpreting abg reports so i will be giving you a mental algorithm good evening ritesh so i'll be i'll be giving you a mental algorithm that you can follow to interpret any abg report be it, be it for exam purposes or for practical purposes okay so uh, before we start the session let me tell you few facts about an academy plans plus subscription gives an access to good evening meenakshi Uh, plus subscription gives an access to both live and recorded classes it also gives an access to a question bank with 25000 plus questions iconic subscription gives an access to both an academy and preplada platform special class features include interactive live sessions you will be able to participate in polls and if you use the raise a hand option you will be able to interact with the educator one on one and you can get your doubts clarified real time and these are our toppers in the latest neat pg september 2021 the highest was 694 closely followed by 688 uh, good evening joy good evening ts and this is about the test ritual that is happening on a regular basis on an academy platform the first tabla column is about the free test ritual and then it's about plus batch test ritual so i always suggest that all of you take up as many tests as possible because that will help you understand why you stand yeah you will understand what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are and do not forget to participate in the study with me youtube test that will be conducted tomorrow at 9 pm okay so it will be based on the four sessions that have that we have uh, discussed so far uh, try to attend the test and we have structured batches for all upcoming exams the first one is focus fmg 2022 comprehensive batch and the next one is target neat pg 2022 mcq discussion batch so this is an impressive batch i would say because uh, the schedule that has been given for this batch is quite uh, good it will be high yield it has got two modules module 1 has got uh, mcq discussion and module 2 will also be an mcq discussion but it will be a ultra fast revision and it will include all previous year questions and uh, this is about the neat pg subscription plan uh, so the minimum that you can subscribe for is 3 month subscription which would cost you 11250 but if you use any of the educator's code you will get a 10 percentage off and my code is biochem life you can use this to get 10 percentage off okay so that's all about an academy plan uh, plans let's start discussing these mcqs So this is the first question give your opinion regarding acid base status of a blood sample that was taken from a person who was acutely hysterical so the history also matters it's it's an acutely hysterical person and before you start interpreting uh, or do you want to try the answer can anyone tell me the answer for this question respiratory acidosis respiratory alkalosis metabolic acidosis metabolic alkalosis what do you think is the right answer respiratory alkalosis very good so janet is right ts neural all of you are right joy is also right good yashwant very good so uh, let's begin by discussing the normal values yeah whenever you're trying to interpret a lab report kavin thinks it's d kavin alone thinks it's d let's start uh, understanding the normal values the first normal value that you have to know is ph what is a normal ph all of you normal ph is 7.36 to 7.44 yeah this is the normal ph and what is a normal pco2 if you take out the 7 here yeah if you take out the 7 here and the decimal what is the number you have it is 36 to 44 so normal partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 36 to 44 mm of mercury and what is a normal bicarbonate the normal bicarbonate is 24 on either side you can have 3 yeah on either side you can have 3 so it is 21 to 27 milli equivalents per liter okay so these are the normal values that you should have in mind normal ph is 7.36 to 7.44 normal pco2 is 36 to 44 and normal bicarbonate is 21 to 27 milli equivalents per liter 
Yashishwani thinks it's respiratory alkalosis with compensation. Good Yashishwani. So these are the normal values and whenever you are trying to interpret an ABG report, the first value that you should look at is pH. Step number one is you look at pH and you know normal value 7.36 to 7.44. If the pH is less than 7.36, what is your interpretation all of you? If it's less than 7.36, your interpretation will be acidosis right your interpretation will be acidosis and if the ph is more than 7.44 what will be your interpretation if it is more than 7.44 your interpretation will be it is alkalosis but all of you remember a ph normal ph of 7.36 to 7.44 does not exclude an acid base disorder do you all understand this a normal ph of 7.36 to 7.44 does not exclude a normal acid base uh, does not exclude an acid base disorder because there is a possibility of mixed acid base disorder right Yes or no, there is a possibility of mixed acid base disorder. For what if the person has got metabolic acidosis with metabolic alkalosis? The pH can be normal, but the person is suffering from an acid base disorder. So always have this in mind. Just because the person has got normal pH, you cannot exclude an acid base disorder. You are supposed to look at bicarbonate and PCO2 values. Only when there is normal pH, normal bicarbonate and normal PCO2, only when all these three values are normal, then you can exclude an acid base disorder and you can conclude that the person is in normal acid base homeostasis. Okay, so this is step number one. Step number two is to find out whether it's a metabolic defect or a respiratory defect. Okay, so how will you find out whether it's a metabolic defect or a respiratory defect by looking at bicarbonate and by looking at PCO2. So let's first consider the scenario wherein the pH is less than 7.36. Yeah, pH is less than 7.36. It can be either because of low bicarbonate or it can be because of high PCO2. Yeah, it can be either because of low bicarbonate or high PCO2. Why, why do you think a low bicarbonate can cause acidosis? Because bicarbonate is a plasma buffer. So when the buffer value is low, metabolic acids will accumulate that causes acidosis and that condition is called as metabolic acidosis. It's clear, right? If low pH is accompanied by low bicarbonate, then it means metabolic acids have accumulated and that is called as metabolic acidosis. Whereas if low pH is accompanied by high PCO2, then that is called as respiratory acidosis. Why do you think high PCO2 causes acidosis? Because carbon dioxide is a source of acid, right? Carbon dioxide is a source of acid. So high PCO2 causing acidosis will be called as respiratory acidosis. So this is about acidosis. Yeah, we are clear about acidosis. Now about alkalosis. If alkalosis is accompanied by high bicarbonate, uh, this animation is because uh, I will be sending it as a PDF. So the animation will be missing there. So that's why you get it repeated. So alkalosis, what are the two possibilities for alkalosis? It can be either because of high bicarbonate or low PCO2. Yeah, it can be either because of high bicarbonate or low PCO2. If it's because of high bicarbonate, then that is called as metabolic alkalosis. If it is because of low PCO2, then that is called as respiratory alkalosis. It's very simple, right? So this is step number two. So can we look at the history and the uh, case that is provided to you? Yeah. Yeah. So have a look at this. Tell me interpret the pH value. Normal is 7.36 to 7.44. In this case pH has been elevated. Right. So what is your diagnosis? It is alkalosis. Okay, it is alkalosis and this alkalosis is accompanied by low bicarbonate because I said the normal values between 21 to 27 milli equivalents per liter. In this case, bicarbonate is low. Can a low bicarbonate explain alkalosis all of you? Can a low bicarbonate explain alkalosis? If low bicarbonate is the cause of acid based disorder, it should have been acidosis. So this is not the reason. And this alkalosis is accompanied by low PCO2. What does it mean? It means it is respiratory alkalosis. 
so the history also supports this how does the history support you it tells you that the person is hysterical and hysterical person will hyperventilate wash away carbon dioxide so you are going to observe what acid base disorder all of you are going to observe respiratory alkalosis okay so answer is choice b now the next question is interpret the abg report so can you all try answering this blood ph normal is 7.36 to 7.44 in this case ph is low and this low ph is accompanied by very good manasa this low ph is accompanied by low bicarbonate so what is your interpretation it is because of metabolic acidosis yeah it is because of metabolic acidosis so you have four choices out of the four choices you have excluded what you have excluded compensated respiratory acidosis you have excluded uncompensated respiratory acidosis but you are left with compensated and uncompensated metabolic acidosis so you have to find out whether it's compensated or not so what is the basis of compensation so you know step number 1 is looking at ph step number 2 is looking at bicarbonate and pco2 to find out the primary acid base disorder and step number 3 is to find out compensation yeah to st step number 3 is to find out if there is ac accurate or appropriate compensation or not so let me tell you the basis of compensation here whenever the primary defect is metabolic yeah whenever the primary defect is metabolic which system will come for compensation lungs will come for compensation if the primary defect is kidney yeah if the primary defect is kidney what comes for compensation lung will come for compensation whereas if the primary defect is respiratory yeah if the primary defect is respiratory then kidneys will come for compensation this is the basis and compensation is always parallel in the sense if the primary defect is a decrease in bicarbonate if the primary defect is a decrease in bicarbonate compensation will be a decrease in pco2 so how does this happen you all know decrease in bicarbonate is metabolic acidosis and in metabolic acidosis how do you think decrease in pco2 will help carbon dioxide is a source of acid once you wash away carbon dioxide a source of acid is getten it's gotten rid of and without acid the ph will raise and how do you get rid of carbon dioxide you know whenever there is acidosis your respiratory center gets stimulated and you know you will hyperventilate that is why in metabolic acidosis what is the breathing you all observe in metabolic acidosis what is the breathing you all observe it is kusmol's breathing so kusmol's breathing what does it do it washes away carbon dioxide reduces carbon dioxide concentration and it compensates for the reduction in ph do you understand this so it is always a parallel compensation another scenario let's consider metabolic alkalosis what happens in metabolic alkalosis the primary defect very good all of you very good manasa so the primary defect in metabolic alkalosis is increase in bicarbonate in which case what will be the compensation compensation will be parallel so it is going to be an increase in carbon dioxide because you know increase in carbon dioxide will act as a source of acid will neutralize the alkali and how do you accumulate carbon dioxide whenever there is alkalosis your respiratory center is depressed so you accumulate carbon dioxide and you compensate for the acidosis do you all understand this so compensation is always done by the other system and the compensation is always parallel do you all understand this so the first fact is it's always parallel alteration and only in the case of respiratory defects there is always an acute compensation and a chronic compensation yeah only when it's a respiratory disorder there will be an acute compensation and a chronic compensation because acute compensation will be done by the buffers themselves and chronic compensation will be done by the kidney it will take some time for the kidney to reclaim bicarbonate or to lose bicarbonate so in respiratory disorders there is always an acute compensation and a chronic compensation okay um what does harjot want i don't understand your questions okay so this is the basis of compensation now how will you know whether it's compensated or uncompensated you have formula to calculate the compensation okay so first let me tell you the formula for metabolic acidosis 
so all of you tell me what is metabolic acidosis metabolic acidosis is decrease in ph that is caused by decrease in bicarbonate you know metabolic acidosis is very good neural it is decrease in ph caused by a decrease in bicarbonate in which case what should be the compensation all of you can you all type it if the primary defect is a decrease in bicarbonate what will be the compensation the compensation will be a decrease in pco2 how much should the carbon dioxide reduce so the expected carbon dioxide as neural has mentioned here it is winter's formula expected partial pressure of carbon dioxide is equal to 1.5 into bicarbonate plus 8 yeah expected pco2 is equal to 1.5 into bicarbonate plus 8 i will give you an example very good swati so i will give you an example suppose a person's ph is 7.35 okay and bicarbonate happens to be 20 bicarbonate happens to be 20 what is the expected pco2 first make a diagnosis all of you yes plus or minus 2 so first make a diagnosis low ph means it is acidosis and this acidosis is accompanied by a reduction in bicarbonate which means it is metabolic acidosis and in metabolic acidosis the expected compensation is i will be telling you about delta delta ratio uh, probably in uh, a special class yeah in one of the special classes i will be telling you here i don't think we we'll have enough time for discussing delta delta ratio i'll quickly tell you the uh, overall algorithm that needs to be followed and then if time permits i will tell you about delta delta ratio otherwise it can be discussed later okay so this is metabolic acidosis and metabolic acidosis expected compensation is a decrease in pco2 and what is the expected pco2 all of you expected pco2 is 1.5 into bicarbonate what is the bicarbonate here 20 plus 8 so 1.5 into 20 is 30 30 plus 8 is 38 so expected pco2 is 38 have you all understood this yeah in this case expected pco2 is 38 so from 40 you expect the pco2 to be reduced to 38 in the person if you see that the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is still 40 in spite of ph being 7.35 bicarbonate being 20 if pco2 still remains 40 what will be your answer all of you yeah what will be your answer your answer will be it is uncompensated metabolic acidosis clear it will be uncompensated metabolic acidosis what if the pco2 is 38 md biochemistry ke baad mch plastics no no come on that's definitely not possible how can you do plastic surgery after doing a medicine based subject yeah if pco2 happens to be 38 what will be your answer your answer will be compensated metabolic acidosis it will be compensated metabolic acidosis now check this what if the pco2 happens to be 30 from 40 you expect it to be reduced to 38 and on the contrary if pco2 is 30 what will be a conclusion i will tell you yashashwini can you answer me this question if pco2 is 30 then what is your then then what is your conclusion your body never overcompensates is that clear you can never say it's overcompensated metabolic acidosis it never overcompensates it tries to compensate so it is going to be uncompensated or compensated so if that is overcompensation it means it's a mixed acid base disorder which hidden mixed acid base disorder can cause a further reduction in pco2 which mixed acid based disorder can cause a further reduction in pco2 it is respiratory alkalosis yeah it is respiratory alkalosis so in this case i would say it is a case of metabolic acidosis with respiratory alkalosis and somebody else asked yashashwini asked what if the pco2 was 40 yeah what if the pco2 is more than 40 suppose it is 50 then it's self explanatory right if pco2 is 50 then there is respiratory acidosis do you all understand this it means there is respiratory acidosis so this is how you find out mixed acid based disorders is that clear ashashwini yeah so this is about the formula so what is the formula that you use for metabolic acidosis all of you for metabolic acidosis it is 1.5 into bicarbonate plus 8 now what if it's metabolic alkalosis 
yeah in metabolic alkalosis what is it it's an increase in ph caused by an increase in bicarbonate so the compensation is an increase in pco2 how much pco2 can it be in can be increased so expected pco2 is equal to 0.9 into bicarbonate plus 16 yeah expected pco2 is equal to 0.9 into bicarbonate plus 16 i will give you an example suppose ph happens to be 7.46 yeah and bicarbonate happens to be 30 30 milli equivalents per liter so first tell me the diagnosis the normal ph is 7.36 to 7.44 in this case it is elevated normal bicarbonate is 21 to 27 in this case bicarbonate is elevated so high bicarbonate causing high ph is metabolic alkalosis and in metabolic alkalosis what is the expected compensation expected compensation is pco2 should be elevated how much can it be elevated it is 0.9 into bicarbonate plus 16 So it is 0.9 into 30 plus 16, which is 27 plus 16. So what is answer? 27 plus 16 will be 43. Okay. So expected PCO2 in this case is 43 millimeters of mercury. And what if the person's PCO2 remains 40? If the person's PCO2 remains 40, what is your answer? No compensation. So it is uncompensated metabolic alkalosis. what if the pco2 is 43 then you will say it is compensated metabolic alkalosis okay what if the pco2 happens to be 50 what if the pco2 happens to be 50 from 40 to 43 is compensation if it is 50 what is your answer your answer is there is a hidden acid base disorder which has caused further increase in pco2 which is respiratory acidosis yeah which is respiratory acidosis So this is how you can find out mixed acid base disorders. This is the formula for metabolic acidosis and metabolic alkalosis. Okay. Now the next step for respiratory conditions. So what did I tell you about respiratory conditions? I said there is always an acute compensation and chronic compensation. So I will give you a number. Please memorize it. It is one four two five. Yeah, one four two five. the first two numbers are for respiratory acidosis the first two numbers are for respiratory acidosis the second two numbers are for respiratory alkalosis okay what is answer yes it is partial compensation you can it, you don't call it as partial compensation you call it as uncompensated ma'am should the calculated values be so much accurate to diagnose for compensation that is why we always have plus or minus 2 yeah whatever value you have you have plus or minus 2 on either side until then you can have you can play around uh, within that range okay you can never have an accurate number as far as uh, homeostasis is concerned so for respiratory conditions you have to remember four numbers what are the four numbers i told you it is 1 4 and 2 5 and as i told you 1 and 4 are for respiratory acidosis and 2 and 5 are for respiratory alkalosis and the first set of numbers is for acute compensation the second set of numbers are for chronic compensation do you understand this these two are for acute compensation these two are for chronic compensation so respiratory acidosis what is the yes 1 4 2 5 good shivani so acute compensation in acute compensation listen to this carefully for every 10 mm of mercury rise in pco2 yeah for every 10 mm of mercury rise in pco2 in acute conditions bicarbonate will be elevated by 1 milli equivalents per liter do you all understand this for every 10 mm of mercury increase in pco2 bicarbonate rises by 1 milli equivalents per liter 1 4 okay so in chronic conditions for every 10 mm of mercury rise in pco2 bicarbonate increases by 4 or 3.5 yeah 4 or 3.5 milli equivalents per liter so i will give you a clue okay so a person is hyperventilating as we discussed as the first question a hysterical person if it's a hysterical person is it an acute condition that he hyperventilates or is it a chronic condition he is acutely hyperventilating yeah so hysterical person it is acute and in acute condition 
um, okay that is alkalosis let's have another acute condition wherein carbon dioxide accumulates some obstruction in the airway yeah some obstruction in the airway has caused respiratory acidosis and the pco2 has become 60 milli millimeter mm mercury yeah pco2 has become 60 millimeters of mercury now what is the expected bicarbonate all of you sudden obstruction in the airway pco2 is raised to 60 millimeters of mercury i said for every 10 millimeter of mercury rise one milli equivalents per liter of bicarbonate will be elevated so for 20 millimeters of mercury rise bicarbonate will be elevated by two milli equivalents per liter and if you have the normal range as normal value as 24 it will be elevated by two so it is going to be 26 on either side you can have two so the range that you expect in this case is 24 to 28 yeah compensation would be 24 to 28 milli equivalents per liter bicarbonate is that clear okay whereas chronic a person who is suffering from chronic obstructive lung disease a person who is suffering from chronic obstructive lung disease has accumulated carbon dioxide and in this case pco2 is the same 60 millimeters of mercury how much will bicarbonate be elevated for every 10 it is 3.5 for 20 it is 7 so if you have the normal range is 24 plus 7 will be 31 and on either side you can have 2 so the range will be 29 to 33 milli equivalents per liter can you explain again what do you want me to explain again swati this these are the formula for respiratory acidosis yeah so is that clear swati what we are discussing now is about respiratory acidosis okay this is about respiratory acidosis in respiratory acidosis there is always acute compensation and a chronic compensation okay acute compensation and chronic compensation it is 3.5 to be accurate many books including harrison says it's 3.5 so you can have it as 3.5 neural okay so acute and chronic i have given you one example for acute some foreign body in the airway yeah some foreign body in the airway has caused carbon dioxide retention in the person and that is an acute uh, carbon dioxide elevation and because of carbon dioxide elevation carbon dioxide has become 60 millimeters of mercury in that case what is the expected bicarbonate expected bicarbonate is for every 10 i said one will be elevated so for 20 from 40 it is elevated to 60 right so how much has it elevated it is elevated twice 2 2 times 10 so it is going to be elevated by 2 milli equivalents per liter thank you shamim i'm happy that you like it so bicarbonate is 2 will be elevated by 2 milli equivalents per liter so normal is 24 right normal bicarbonate is 24 if you elevate it by 2 it is going to be 26 and on either side you can have 2 so the normal range the expected range will be 24 to 28 if the bicarbonate values between 24 and 28 you will say it is compensated acute respiratory acidosis on the other hand if it's a chronic condition chronic obstructive lung disease yeah chronic obstructive lung disease patient is also presenting with the same pco2 of 60 millimeters of mercury yeah same pco2 of 60 millimeters of mercury in this case what is the expected bicarbonate bicarbonate will be elevated by 3.5 for every 10 so for 20 elevation it will be elevated by 7 from 24 if you elevate 7 it is going to be 31 on either side if you have 2 it is going to be 29 to 33 milli equivalents per liter okay so this is about respiratory acidosis now for respiratory alkalosis again for respiratory alkalosis there is going to be an acute compensation and a chronic compensation and for acute i said here it is 1 4 for acidosis there it is 2 5 right for acute it is elevated for acute it is re reduced by 2 milli equivalents per liter for chronic it is decreased by 5 milli equivalents per liter yeah so can we discuss examples here acute respiratory alkalosis is a person who is hyperventilating okay and because of hyperventilation pco2 is reduced to 30 millimeters of mercury so how much is decreased it is decreased by 10 millimeters of mercury 
when 10 millimeter of mercury fall is observed in PCO2 bicarbonate will be reduced by 2 so from 24 if you reduce 2 it has to be 22 on either side if you have 2 it is going to be 20 to 24 which is expected yeah on either side if you have 2 it is going to be 20 to 24 which is expected in acute respiratory alkalosis chronic respiratory alkalosis any condition wherein there is a diffusion defect along the airway yeah whenever there is a diffusion defect along the airway carbon dioxide diffusion will not be affected only which diffusion gets affected oxygen diffusion gets affected so the person presents with hypoxia and if there is hypoxia the person hyperventilates will the video be available in your youtube channel or only it's live I am out of house, aren't able to listen to you ma'am. Please upload this video in your YouTube channel. This video will be available on an academy YouTube channel anytime you can watch it Dr. Kala. Yeah. It's available on an academy YouTube channel. Okay. So uh, what was I telling you? Yes. Whenever there is a diffusion defect along the airway, the person presents with hypoxia. And hypoxia, the person hyperventilates, so there is going to be hypocarbia. And this hypo, hypocarbia will cause alkalosis. So when will you find acidosis? When will you find respiratory acidosis? And when will you find respiratory alkalosis? Respiratory acidosis is observed in obstruction. Yeah, respiratory acidosis is observed in obstruction. Respiratory alkalosis is observed in diffusion defect. Okay. So whenever there is chronic respiratory alkalosis, if the PCO2 has become 30 millimeters of mercury, okay, what is the expected bicarbonate? I said for every 10 fall, bicarbonate will be reduced by 5. So from 24, if you reduce 5, what is the expected bicarbonate, all of you? Expected bicarbonate is 19. Very good Manasa. So on either side if you have 2 it is going to be anywhere between 17 to 21. That is the expected bicarbonate. So this is how you calculate compensation. So have you understood compensation concept? Yeah. So can we try to solve this uh, problem now? So tell me what is answer? pH is low. You are right. Very good. So pH is low. So it is acidosis. Now look at bicarbonate, bicarbonate value is low, so this can account for acidosis. If a reduction bicarbonate accounts for acidosis, then that is called as metabolic acidosis. In metabolic acidosis, what is the expected compensation? Expected compensation is a decrease in PCO2. And how much PCO2 should be reduced? Expected PCO2 is equal to 1.5 into bicarbonate plus 8. Here it is 14 plus 8. Okay. So 1.5 into 14 is 21. 21 plus 8 is 29. So expected PCO2 is 29 which is on dot. So what is your answer all of you? Your answer will be compensated metabolic acidosis. Clear? Now the next question, um, very good Swati. So the next question is uh, pH, PCO2, bicarbonate, sodium chloride are all provided. Can we start solving this? Yeah. So pH is low. So what is your answer? If the pH is low, it is acidosis. And acidosis is accompanied by a reduction in bicarbonate. So you know it is metabolic acidosis. And in metabolic acidosis, wherein there is reduction in bicarbonate, compensation is a reduction in PCO2. You see that the PCO2 is reduced from 40 to 29. So it is compensated metabolic acidosis. Okay, it is compensated metabolic acidosis. So what are the choices you can exclude all of you from, I mean, based on this? Because it is compensated metabolic acidosis, I am going to exclude uncompensated conditions. Okay. So this is also uncompensated. So both these choices can be excluded. Okay. Now between these two to find out whether it is anion gap which is increased or normal. Let's try to understand the uses of anion gap. Okay. So first about what is anion gap. Anion gap is to be calculated only when it is a case of okay. All of you think yeah uh, it should have been un. 
yeah d is uncompensated d is uncompensated normal anion gap metabolic acidosis a typing mistake okay so what is the use of anion gap i want you to calculate anion gap only when it is a case of metabolic acidosis do you all understand this can you recollect and tell me what are the steps we have discussed so far whenever you have provided an abg report step number 1 is looking at ph and finding out whether it is acidosis or alkalosis that is step number 1 what is step number 2 you looking at bicarbonate and pco2 yeah you looking at bicarbonate and pco2 to find out whether it's a metabolic acidosis whether it's a metabolic defect or a respiratory defect that is step number 2 what is step number 3 step number 3 is you calculating compensation to find out hidden acid base disorders so are you clear about these three steps so far yeah step number 1 is looking at ph to find out acidosis or alkalosis step number 2 is to look at bicarbonate and pco2 to find out whether some metabolic condition or a respiratory condition step number 3 is you calculating compensation to find out if there is a hidden acid base disorder with this mostly we will end the abg report interpretation you are going to go to step 4 only when it is metabolic acidosis where you are going to calculate anion gap don't even attempt calculating anion gap if it's metabolic alkalosis or respiratory acidosis or respiratory alkalosis do it only for which condition do it only for metabolic acidosis okay now what is the basis of anion gap plasma anion gap is based on the fact that in any physiological solution sum of cation will be equal to sum of anion is yes or no in any physiological solution sum of cation will be equal to sum of anion now what are the cations of your plasma all of you what are the cations of your plasma major cation of your plasma will be sodium yeah other than sodium i'm going to consider the remaining cations as unmeasured cations so sodium plus unmeasured cations will be equal to what are the anions of plasma what are the anions of plasma you have chloride and bicarbonate the remaining will be called as unmeasured anions is that clear so sodium plus unmeasured cation is equal to chloride and bicarbonate plus unmeasured anions and what is anion gap anion gap is always considered as a difference between unmeasured anion and unmeasured cation yeah anion gap is always defined as a difference between unmeasured anion and unmeasured cation so can you rearrange this equation unmeasured anion minus unmeasured cation will be equal to sodium minus yeah sodium minus within brackets chloride plus bicarbonate so what is the formula for calculating anion gap anion gap is calculated as sodium minus within brackets chloride and bicarbonate and what are we going to use is anion gap for we are going to use is anion gap to find out the cause of metabolic acidosis do you all understand this anion gap is used to find out the cause of metabolic acidosis because what is metabolic acidosis all of you metabolic acidosis is a decrease in ph caused by a decrease in bicarbonate yeah it is a decrease in ph caused by a decrease in bicarbonate and this decrease in bicarbonate can be either because of utilization of bicarbonate is yes or no decrease in bicarbonate can be either because of increase in utilization of bicarbonate or it can be because of loss of bicarbonate okay ts has got a question why aren't we including potassium we don't include potassium because all these values are of plasma we are not considering the intracellular fluid we are considering the plasma and in plasma sodium value is 135 and when compared to 135 of sodium 3.5 of potassium can be considered as negligible yeah that is why in all standard textbooks if you look at the formula for anion gap potassium is never included is that clear so what is the formula for anion gap anion gap is always sodium minus within brackets chloride and bicarbonate we are not considering intracellular fluid we are considering plasma 
okay so what are the two causes of decrease in bicarbonate it can be either because of increased utilization of bicarbonate or it is because of loss of bicarbonate when will bicarbonate be used more bicarbonate will be used more whenever an abnormal acid is generated yeah whenever an abnormal acid is generated for example ha is generated yeah some abnormal acid ha is generated this ha immediately reacts with the buffer bicarbonate to form h2co3 and a minus to form h2co3 and a minus and in this case do you see that bicarbonate is getting utilized yeah when bicarbonate is utilized that causes metabolic acidosis so increase utilization happens whenever an abnormal acid is getting generated but whenever an abnormal acid is getting generated for every mole of bicarbonate that is getting utilized do you see that an anion is getting generated yeah do you see that an anion is getting generated an unmeasured anion is getting generated for example if it is keto acidosis yeah diabetic keto acidosis what is getting generated keto acid is getting generated for example aceto acetic acid this aceto acetic acid will dissociate to form aceto acetate anion so one unmeasured anion concentration increases i have just passed fmg december with 173 score thanks for making biochem easy to understand i am very happy for you rush rushil is it is that your name i am very happy for you congratulations and i am happy that i was able to help you and your score is great so my best wishes for your future endeavors okay so if it is because of production of an abnormal acid what is getting elevated an unmeasured anion is getting elevated in that case tell me what will happen to anion gap in that case tell me what will happen to anion gap anion gap is defined as a difference between unmeasured anion and unmeasured cation and in this case unmeasured anion concentration increases my pleasure rushil so unmeasured anion concentration increases so what will happen to anion gap anion gap will be elevated so you are looking at an abg report yeah you are look why did shivani say it is decreased hello shivani anion gap is a difference between unmeasured anion and unmeasured cation here unmeasured anion concentration increases so anion gap will be elevated is that clear shivani so you are looking at an abg report and you see that it's a case of metabolic acidosis and then you are calculating anion gap you see that the anion gap is elevated then that is a clue that is given to you that this case of metabolic acidosis is caused by the production of an abnormal acid yeah it's a clue that is given to you that this case of metabolic acidosis is caused by a production of an abnormal acid no problem shivani if you get it now i'm happy okay it's production of an abnormal acid so what are the abnormal acids that can be generated in a body it can be keto acid yeah so it can be diabetic keto acidosis or starvation ketosis second acid that you can produce is lactic acid so any form of lactic acidosis and then any alcohol poisoning yeah methanol poisoning on metabolism will form formic acid is yes or no methanol or ethanol or ethylene glycol yeah methanol or ethanol or ethylene glycol all these are metabolized by where are you teaching biochemistry i am teaching biochemistry at garment thootukudi medical college in tamil nadu okay so methanol ethanol or ethylene glycol all these are alcohols so these alcohols will be metabolized by alcohol dehydrogenase and then an aldehyde dehydrogenase to form an acid right so methanol on metabolism forms formic acid ethanol on metabolism forms acetic acid ethylene glycol on metabolism forms oxalic acid so all these acids will become an anion causing an increase in anion gap okay and then uric acid whenever uric acid accumulates again there is going to be an increase anion gap metabolic acidosis whenever there is chronic kidney disease yeah your kidneys are supposed to filter all metabolic acids so when there is chronic kidney disease all metabolic acids accumulate 
very good shankar so all metabolic acids accumulate and chronic kidney disease can also present as increased anion gap metabolic acidosis so do you still need a mnemonic to memorize the causes of increased anion gap metabolic acidosis all of you yeah do you need a mnemonic still you don't have to be dependent on a mnemonic you try to understand what it means if you try to understand what it means you can clearly find out what are the causes of increased anion gap metabolic acidosis yes aspirin causes increased anion gap metabolic acidosis because it inhibits electron transport chain okay and when electron transport chain gets inhibited oxidation gets inhibited anaerobic metabolism causes lactic acidosis and that causes increased anion gap metabolic acidosis yes mud piles if you try to elaborate mud piles everything will fit into this so tell me what are the causes of increased anion gap metabolic acidosis all of you it is production of an abnormal acid please come to gujarat we have we don't have any good biochemistry teachers like you you can meet me through youtube you can meet me through an academy special classes and plus classes okay yeah so tell me uh, what are the causes of increased anion gap metabolic acidosis production of an abnormal acid like diabetic ketoacidosis or starvation ketosis it can be lactic acidosis lactic acidosis observed whenever there is anaerobic metabolism happening for example as i told you uh, salicylate poisoning okay and then any alcohol metabolism methanol poisoning ethylene glycol poisoning ethanol poisoning and the uh, chronic kidney disease okay so these are all causes of increased anion gap metabolic acidosis now what if the metabolic acidosis is because of loss of bicarbonate what are the two routes in which bicarbonate can be lost all of you yes uremia good what are the two routes through which you can lose bicarbonate you can lose bicarbonate either through git or through kidney okay example for gi loss of bicarbonate is diarrhea example for gi loss of bicarbonate is diarrhea because in diarrhea intestinal mucus gets lost and mucus is rich in bicarbonate and whenever bicarbonate gets lost yes i will have to close the session in another 5 minutes uh, i will take a, the continuity of this session in one of the special classes at the earliest yeah so after this question i will have to end the session because i have a special class at 8 o'clock okay so we will quickly discuss about anion gap so diarrhea is an example of uh, uh, gi loss of bicarbonate because intestinal mucus is rich in bicarbonate okay and renal loss of bicarbonate example will be renal tubular acidosis example will be renal tubular acidosis wherein through kidneys we start losing bicarbonate now irrespective of the root of loss of bicarbonate your body will try to compensate for it by reclaiming chloride do you understand this be it gi loss of bicarbonate or renal loss of bicarbonate your body will try to compensate for the loss of this anion by reclaiming chloride so in both these conditions chloride concentration will be high and that is why you call these conditions as hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis that is why you call these conditions as hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis and in this case can you tell me what will happen to anion gap i said anion gap is defined as a difference between unmeasured anion and unmeasured cation and i said it's calculated as sodium minus within brackets chloride and bicarbonate didn't i tell you sodium minus within bracket chloride and bicarbonate and then renal or gi loss of bicarbonate the bicarbonate loss is compensated by an increase in chloride very good manasa decrease in bicarbonate is compensated by an increase in chloride so what will happen to anion gap anion gap will remain normal so if you see a case of normal anion gap metabolic acidosis that is a clue that is given to you what is the clue that is given to you they are telling you that this metabolic acidosis is caused by loss of bicarbonate either through git or through kidney clear okay and what are the examples of gi loss of bicarbonate it is diarrhea what are the examples for renal loss of bicarbonate it is renal tubular acidosis it can be type 1 or type 2 or type 4 anything okay so summary is anion gap can be increased anion gap or normal anion gap 
if it is increase anion gap it is because of production of an abnormal acid right like keto acid or lactic acid or any alcohol metabolite or salicylate poisoning as you all mentioned or normal anion gap metabolic acidosis means it is a loss of bicarbonate either through GAT or through kidney GI loss of bicarbonate is diarrhea renal loss of bicarbonate is renal tubular acidosis okay so now can you tell me the answer what is the anion gap in this case sodium minus within brackets chloride and bicarbonate sodium minus 90 plus 14 so it is 1 or 4 so it is 26 which is increased anion gap metabolic acidosis so what is the answer all of you we already know it is compensated now we know it is increased anion gap so the answer is compensated increased anion gap metabolic acidosis okay so this is about the four steps that you need to follow uh, to be able to interpret ABG report okay and there are a few more steps which I will tell you in one of the special classes so we have a series of special classes planned for uh, NEET PG 2022 batch so continue attending those sessions and one of the sessions will be on again ABG interpretation and today at 8 o'clock now at 8 o'clock there is a session uh, it's a Harrison based teaching wherein I will be telling you about uh, causes of hyponatremia and before that I will be telling about factors affecting sodium balance okay so try to attend the session see you all and don't forget to attend the test tomorrow okay it is not normal anion gap it is increased anion gap it, oh you're asking for normal values 12 on either side 2 12 plus or minus 2 if you're not including potassium it is 12 plus or minus 2 it is 10 to 14 okay so see you all